Hi everyone, I'm Danny and I'm an admissions consultant here at The Profs in engineering and sciences admissions applications for top universities in the UK, such as Oxbridge and Imperial. We'll be looking at how to get into Oxford for engineering science, what goes into preparing for it, what goes into applying, and ultimately how to present yourself as the strongest possible candidate to hopefully get an offer in the end. Firstly, the Oxford Engineering Science course has entry requirements of A star, A star, A. So this is similar to Cambridge's engineering requirements as well as Imperial. So these are some of the top grades required from any course across the country. So as you can see, it's not an easy task to get in. With this, you need to have a really good track record of grades from school. And in Oxford especially, they do tend to weigh your GCSE track record quite highly compared to other universities in the UK. So as Cambridge might focus on AS and mock exam grades during your AS year, where your predicted grades are based on these, Oxford tend to have quite a high weighting on GCSE grades. So if you have quite good GCSEs across the board, but possibly a slightly poorer AS performance than you were expecting, this could actually work in your favor at Oxford compared to applying for Cambridge. Um, so not to worry if you don't have very good GCSE grades or very good AS grades or predicted grades, because it can work in your favor for one or the other uni if you're deciding between Oxbridge courses. So for Oxford, the main thing to remember is that they do place GCSE results very highly when deciding between candidates. So what goes into applying for Oxford Engineering Science? Well, firstly, you have to apply for the for university. So usually you have an early admissions deadline compared to other universities in the UK. So you have to submit your UCAS application typically in October rather than the January deadline that's expected for the universities. In this UCAS application, you'll typically be asked for a personal statement. So this used to be 4,000 character essays that would be completed by students, whereas now it's just a set of questions talking about your intent, your passion, why you want to study at university and why that course. These are not as highly uh, considered when applying for Oxford Engineering. So for humanities subjects at both Cambridge and Oxford, these weigh more. So these personal statements do weigh a bit more. Whereas for the sciences, Oxford as well as Cambridge do tend to focus on the more technical aspects of your application. So this will involve make sure you have high predicted grades, high uh, admissions test scores, as well as high, uh, as well as good performance at interview. So these personal statements, while a necessary part of the process, are not the backbone of admissions decisions. So you shouldn't try to make a good impression on the personal statement and answer well with your enthusiasm, showing that you have a good proclivity for engineering, but you should also make sure that you spend your time and efforts more focused on the other parts of the admissions process compared to this. After you submit your UCAS application and personal statement, you should then be invited for a uh, physics aptitude test sitting. So this will typically happen a few weeks after you've submitted that application. So the preparation should not be left until the few weeks between the personal statement submission and the, the sitting, the PAT, the physics aptitude test. The preparation should have started long before then because the, the physics aptitude test does have some content from A2 or your second year of A-levels. And because of this, you need as much time as possible to get familiar with certain concepts. So I'd recommend that when it comes to seeing something such as a PAT, you try to start as early as possible because even though you will find the questions really difficult, it's good to get a handle of what things you will particularly struggle on, as well as what bits you might not need to work on as much. And then you can spend most of your time or most of the year focusing on, on those topics to make sure you can get really good marks in this and ace the physics aptitude test. So starting early is the main thing I'd advise with that and also just making sure you make good, consistent progress. It doesn't mean you have to spend 20 to 30 hours a week doing lots of PAT prep, but it does mean that you just try and focus on your general problem solving, make sure that you can solve problems creatively and understand your content from A-level in as much depth as possible. Because Oxford shortlist quite early on from this, so they tend to interview about, or just under 40% of candidates, so that means from the people sitting the pack to the people that do get called up to interview, there's quite a big drop in the number of candidates that you're competing against. 
So if you do get to the interview stage, that's a very big or very good sign of being close to getting an offer because it's a smaller pool of candidates to pick from and you've clearly shown that you're someone they would consider giving an offer to in the end. So typically to get to an interview, you need to get quite a high mark in the engineering admissions um, test, which is a physics aptitude test. And this would involve usually getting around the 60 to 70 mark in, in a paper. Again, this is, the, this is year on year dependent, but trying to aim for that based on previous years is good. And also uh, the, the format of the test now is online. So it's slightly different to the old, old papers, which were sat in person at an exam center, but the style of the questions nevertheless has remained pretty much the same. So using the PAT papers that go all the way back until 2006 are really useful for making sure you're in as good position as possible to do well on the PAT. And then now when it comes to interviews, Typically for Oxford Engineering, you will have two interviews, one at two, different, uh, one at two different colleges. So you will have one at one college possibly in the morning and then another one in the afternoon at another college, or they might be split on different days depending on how, how it's structured. The, the content of these interviews can either be personal statement motivations and what things you enjoy in engineering, but will most likely be focused on the uh, more technical aspects of, of the application. So your mathematical ability, your understanding of things such as mechanics, electricity, waves, fields, things, things along those lines. So making sure that you're, uh, you're as well read as possible in these types of topics, as well as maybe reading a bit further ahead into what's covered in a uh, first year undergraduate course at Oxford. Knowing these things will put you in a good position to be able to handle almost whatever comes at you from the Oxford interviewers. And then once you've made a good impression at the Oxford interview, then you should be able to receive an engineering offer in January if all those things go well. But in order to make sure that you're as good a candidate as possible from this, you need to make sure that you try and, you try and maximize your profile in each bit of the applications process. So make sure your personal statement is as good as it can be. Even though it's not the most important part, it's still an important part. So it should, it should still have some of your time and attention. Make sure your predicted grades are as high as possible. Because of the 2A star A entry requirement, if your predicted grades are just the 2A star A, you're unlikely to get an offer because co colleges, especially Oxford colleges, would know that people do tend to miss, miss offers. So they do tend to miss their predicted grades because a lot of schools can tend to inflate them. So it's not surprising to see a lot of people who did get the, the offer from Oxford end up missing these grades when it comes to results day the next year. So make sure your predicted grades are as high as possible, shows the college that if you were to miss these, you would hopefully at least meet the minimum to a star A entry requirement. Whereas for those who are scraping to get the two A stars and A, it might be that they miss it, miss that, miss that result and then Oxford have to uh, have missed the place or have to offer, offer this up to other candidates. So you need to make sure on that front as well that you have as high predicted grades as possible. For the PAT, make sure you start nice and early and also focus on tackling the weak parts of, uh, of your understanding because usually a lot of students will focus on what they're stronger at. So make sure that you get this part under control, then puts you in a good position to do well on the PAT hopefully be invited to interviews, and then performing well at interviews involves you communicating your understanding very well, as well as being able to take the prompts from interviewers, try and get to a solution with their help, and also just showing that you have a good level of intuition for engineering and understanding general engineering principles when it comes to answering questions. And after all that, you should hopefully receive an offer in the end. If you found that video helpful, then feel free to give a like and subscribe, and also share this with any friends that you think might find it useful too. If you have any questions or any queries about this video or anything about the process as a whole, then feel free to add that question in the comments below. And if you feel like you could benefit from the support of an admissions consultant like me for applying for Oxford in engineering, then feel free to contact the profs on the information provided on screen right now. And as always, best of luck with your application and preparation.